the first step is recruiting, and then the second step is once we get those guys on campus to really do a tremendous job of getting them strong, and that's been a huge focus, um, a challenge. You know, I specifically um, singled those guys out, you know, to both our staff, our strength staff, and to the to the team itself, uh, offense and defensive line, to really have a great summer. You know, to be able to put on good weight, to get stronger. Um, we had goals for every one of those guys over the summer and uh, to keep them on track from a technical perspective, things they're going to work on fundamentally, those carry into fall camp, you know. And um, it's, uh, it's going to continue to be a focal point in terms of getting proper reps. Uh, one thing we're doing a little bit, um, you know, modifying our, our schedule itself in regards to practice time and reps uh, to create more depth. We're going to have some, some more rep opportunities for our threes and even sometimes fours. Um, and so just trying to get guys on the field as much technique work. We expanded, we expanded our individual periods, um, which I think will help us get more technique work to get these young guys brought along faster and then just got to go play football. You know, So to me, um, extending our team periods, probably five minutes each to get more reps with those younger guys. So just have a, have a plan in place because we know how critical that is on both sides of the ball and it's going to be a big key for our success. Yeah, Deshaun Brown's here and uh, is fully cleared and he's ready to roll. And uh, still the, in the final few days here, hopefully we're with Antoine Whitner, so he should be should be here shortly. So, but uh, very promising on both ends. But yeah, Deshaun's already to totally cleared. Well, we'll go, that's like you said, even so you kind of look at your whole, you know, your depth at each position. And that was a big part of our discussions as, as we met as the staff uh, during the, the last few weeks to, to get those um, reps set up. And every, every period is going to be a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, you're going to have at least, you know, ones, twos, and threes going. And you'll have different guys taking reps with the different groups. And we'll just intermix those guys and, and uh, give them a chance to be able. Because, you know, obviously, it's a little different when you're working with those different groups, you know. So, But I think that all three will be rotated within those groups as well, initially for sure. And then as, it, as every day passes and the weeks pass, you get more and more zeroed in on, you know, kind of how you, you see it playing itself out. So, But uh, it's very important, you know, when we do, you know, special situations to be able to get those guys in those opportunities where it's two minute periods or full team or whether we're doing, you know, live goes and the quarterbacks will never be full bore live in regards to being tackled during fall camp. But but uh, there'll be different tempos that we'll use uh, for our teams. And it's, it's important. And even blitz periods, be able to get to, to feel the pressure, you know, check, you know, be able to make the checks and adjustments and whether it's a physical verbal adjustment or it's a side adjustment with the route. So those are all important parts of the process of getting our quarterbacks ready. Yeah, there's no question. And so it's a great problem to have. I mean, we've, like I said, we're going to even talk about it tonight in our team meeting about uh, how our practices are going to be set up to get more guys um, looks. And it's, it's sec the secondary is another example of that. Linebackers, another example of that. Even having to talk about even doing, you know, having the, the fourth group at times come in and get some work, you know. So um, there's a definite plan in place to be able to see those guys. But the key is when they're when they get their shot, they got to make the most of it, you know. And then those the scrimmages are going to be big, which those will be down the road here. But uh, just being able to, um, from a practice structure perspective, we have got to get those guys reps, you know. So and it's uh, you know we're not going to be doing, you know scout teams yet you know that that's still weeks away so to be able to get those guys against each other you really have to do a great job of being very organized as a staff and and every rep's going to matter and uh, those guys know that and and uh, i just think that uh, it's just a result of having you know quality guys and quality depth and that's part of it so that's a good good problem to have but we definitely have to have made some adjustments yeah, yeah coach uh Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, first of all, I think uh, you know, he's a returning starter, you know, and I think there's a, a lot of merit in that, and uh, he's earned it, you know, and I think there's a, a level of, um, you know, when you put yourself in that position, look at, like he has in the past, and, you know, he earned the chance to be a starter two years ago and then uh, did it last year as well. And so, to me, you know, reward him for that, you know, but at the same time, like I said, I've mentioned it with other positions, and I've told Stevie Scott the same thing, you know, and same thing with our linebackers and safeties and corners and, you know, receivers and offensive line. All just, just, it's not just quarterback. That's the one that usually gets talked about. But, uh, you know, it, those other guys have the opportunity and, and will have the opportunity to, to compete for the position and, and beat them out. You know, so, but like when you just say who's going to go in with the ones the first time, it's going to be Peyton because he's uh, the returning star at that position. I think he's, he's earned that, the right to have that spot. Jim, Jim Coyle, you talk about making that determination of who starts it. Guy who can lead this team. What does that mm -hmm. specifically look like? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and it gets it gets asked a lot, and it's it's worthy of that. And I think that uh, um, you know you, you just go through as, as a coach, and and some of it is, is your gut feel, you know, in terms of how you believe that that guy um, can take your team down the field. And and there's a there's an execution piece to that, that to be able to distribute the football in both the run game and the in the pass game effectively. Um, its ability to um, you know move those chains, you know, and, and but I think at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is, and there's we're going to go through and we'll have stats and we'll have percentages on completion and and first down effectiveness, third down effectiveness, all those things that go into to creating an effective offense. But um, at, at the end of the day, it has to be you know when when it's minute twenty to go in the game and we got the ball. Who does our, do our guys believe is going to take us down the field and go score and go win the game? And to where um, we have the mindset as coaches and, and our team feels that as long as there's time on that clock and that guy is in the huddle leading our offense, that we got a chance to win. And so to me, that's, you know, that's called winning your team. Win your teammates, who they believe in. And, and uh, you know, it's not just liking the guy. It's not a popularity contest. It's about, you know, because they're all three awesome guys, you know. And it's who do they believe and who do we believe and, and who believes in himself enough to take this team down the field and go win the game. And so at the end of the day, you're judged on, you know, the scoreboard as a, as a coach and, and as a player. That's how we get judged professionally, and that's how we get judged in performance. And so that's a big part of it. And so to me, that's what, you know, that position, I think, and we would all agree that, that uh, teams usually go as far as the, the, the town of their quarterback, you know, and the play of their quarterback. And that's protecting the football. That's part of it, too. You know, that's about being able to do a really, really good job of understanding the offense and understanding the, the various things that can happen and make adjustments, you know, whether it's verbal adjustments and, you know, things you do with the receivers and, and it's run game reads and, and being able to do a great job of commanding that, that room and having that leadership piece and, and just exuding that confidence in the guys around you. And, and that position to me, you know, as I say about linebackers, it demands production, it demands leadership, and those two key components don't change, you know. And so it's just another opportunity this year. We had a conversation a year ago about this position coming in, and and uh, here we are again with an opportunity to do that. And I think competition makes everybody better, okay. And it's it's human nature for that to be the case. And so I love you know the opportunity we have. I love the number of guys in that room that have worked extremely hard, and and you can say that for a lot of positions. And so we're gonna have a very very competitive fall camp that's going to. You know, as we always say, iron sharpens iron. So we're going to sharpen each other each and every day and, and make, make each other better and, and get the product we want. Zach, and then Aaron. I guess uh, along that line, too, I mean, how much, if at all, do you maybe lean on guys like the more experienced guys in the offense in terms mm -hmm. of getting feedback from them on just what they feel like works at that quarterback position? Well, a guy like Cole, a guy like Nick, a guy like Donovan, do you kind of seek their input at any point? There's no question. You know, just kind of, I don't say it's a sit there and, you know, have a, a, a direct, you know, hey, who, who do you think our quarterback should be? But you, you can tell, you know, as you talk to them. And, and uh, I think, yeah, that's part of that's, that's winning the team component, you know, and those guys believing, you know, even last night in the you know, initial team meeting that you kind of get the, you know, um, initial things. You, you want some thoughts going on in their head. And, and I challenge them about, you know, your, your mindset um, that drives your expectations and your beliefs. And to me, okay, what's the mindset of that, that quarterback, you know, and, and his, you know, the way he plays, the way he practices, the way he, you know, exudes that confidence to the guys around, does he make the people around him better? And those guys will know that. They'll, they'll, they'll feel that, you know, as, as players on the team and players on offense and talking to the defense. Hey, who do you, you know, just like 
who, who, what do you think about that? Those different guys and where the how they throw the football and how they, you know, look things off and just you know, it's just a, it's a whole big picture part. And I obviously have a perspective from a defensive angle, oftentimes, and and that's how I look at it. And, and so we just try to go through and and I think yeah, it's a very holistic approach to try and find because it's going to be a, I mean, I think it's going to be highly highly competitive. I really do. I think there's a lot of a lot of good things there, and uh, I'm anxious to see how it all plays out. Well, I think it's just, it's a matter of you know meeting with all three guys individually and just talking them through, and that's one thing I want to do a good job of as the head coach is to really work them through this process and and uh, to help them know you know what what we need to see, and it's probably going to be more of a you know hey this is what I expect from this position you know and. Uh, Obviously, there's different, uh, you know, applications each guy will receive that with in terms of how he, you know, you know, the things he knows he wants to do. And, and he's obviously been here long enough, and I know him well enough to, to have those open and honest conversations. And so, but yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, is that that's what I want and expect from that position is to elevate the level of play in order for us to take the next step that we want to take as a program and, you know, and, and as an offense. And that's a uh, you know, big part of what we have. And that's really, to me, you know, that's, you know, we're talking about it here almost the whole time, and I, if you go to everybody's fall camp and you know the NFL and, and uh, every level, you know that person that plays that position um, is really you know the key element to to your team, and so that's why it's such a big deal. Yeah, I think sometimes that often is is said when you have guys that you're trying to play them all in a game, you know. And I think that that's where it gets a little bit difficult, you know, uh, when when people try to, you know, and it, it, it's and I think that's probably the case in terms of reps to a certain degree. So that that definitely has to be something that we focus in on here as we move into fall camp. But but to me, you know, I've clearly stated that that we're going to have one quarterback that's going to be leading our team, you know, and, and that's where you say, um, you know, the, the process to get to that one guy, you know, I think that's what we're going through right now. And that's, that's where we're evaluating. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why I say that, uh, you know, um, we got several guys at every position that are competing to play. It doesn't mean we don't have, you know, good players there that are going to you have an issue because you got multiple guys. And that's, I'm excited for having multiple guys, you know, and so I've definitely been, I've been here enough times in situations where we didn't have a lot of guys, and uh, I was very concerned, you know, at this point in the season. So um, I just think that, uh, you know, that's why you recruit, and that's why you um, scour the country to find guys that come here and help us be a better football team. So to me, it's a matter of going through this process right now, and we'll take these next couple of weeks and and uh, figure it out. And then once we make that decision, that, that guy will be the person. But I will say, you know, we've all seen, you know, there's going to, you know, things happen. Seasons are long. A lot of things go through this. And so guys got to be ready to go. And so uh, no matter how it plays out for week one, you know, you got to be able to be ready when, when called upon. There's no question. You know, I think that's, uh, you know, as we mentioned, it's one of my, you know, key concerns slash, you know, areas of emphasis. And so, yeah, you really want seven or eight guys that you feel, you know, are really good. Yeah, perfect scenarios, you got 10, you know, you got a, a number two behind everyone that's, that's uh, the next guy in. Doesn't always work like that. You know, we always say we're going to play our best five, you know, so you kind of shuffle the deck sometimes when that happens. So that's the process of going through and creating depth at center, depth at guard. You know, we, we kind of look at it as the inside guys, outside guys, and, you know, tackle bodies and, and guys that can play um, in the interior from a more of a mass perspective. So, you know, that to me is going to be, you know, a big part of it, you know, and we'll, you'll see different combinations of groups in there, um, not necessarily because of injuries, but just because we're trying to get more guys ready, you know, so because we know that, uh, you know, a guy like Matt Bedford is, even though he's a true freshman, was here in the, was here in the spring, so he has a different level of rep base and experience that, uh, the guys like Tim Weaver who just got here doesn't have, you know, so, but uh, at the same time, got to get these guys ready. And we've got some redshirt freshmen that uh, have, have, you know, had a whole 
off season to to really develop and a full spring under their belt now, and so those guys need to rise up. And so really going to emphasize getting those guys lots of reps during fall camp here. We kind of know what what Coy can do. We know what Simon can do, and and uh, Hunter John, Hunter Little John as well. So I just think that those those three guys have really kind of established themselves as as guys that uh, are anchors there on that old line, which is exciting and, and a good thing. But uh, got to bring those other guys along. Yeah, we go through and, and uh, you know, Dave's going to do a little presentation tonight to our whole team and, and just show where we came from, you know, and it's been really neat to see, and I won't get too specific, but but uh, to be able to see us as a group, especially we had so many young guys last year, you know, that, that played and and uh, just to kind of, if you kind of have a visual, I just kind of see a group of guys on there and you have their, you know, their weight and then you have their strength numbers and, and everything just kind of just shifted up. You know, everybody kind of, we have a whole group of guys now. We had a lot of guys and we haven't really changed. You know, there's not as, as many high-end guys. That's, that's similar to what we've had. But the whole middle group here has just all shifted up. They're all stronger. They're more explosive. Um, and uh, I feel great about their condition right now. And uh, I know our strength staff does an excellent job. And uh, I actually was... Um, I think other than maybe being at the, the Big Ten media days, um, we gave our guys the, the 4th of July day and that weekend off. Uh, other than that, they were here all June and July, and uh, I was at every workout. And so, uh, like I said, except for the couple days, we were at Big Ten media days. And so um, I just I've, I've watched them. I've been in there. That was by design. I want to be around our team as much as possible, and I love being around them and uh, just watching them work, seeing them move, and seeing these young guys um, get developed and watching our guys train together. So uh, definitely a more powerful, more explosive team with better speed and uh, more confidence, which that's an outgrowth of – I think that's where you get your confidence. Yeah, I really do. I think that's where that, – that's one of the biggest benefits of having a great strength staff that the players believe in. And uh, they, uh, they really believe that those guys are going to make them – you know, more explosive players. And that's, and that's a key term for us. And that, that power, you know, we've really gone away from the one rep max mentality. We've gone away from thinking about 40 times. It's miles per hour and speed in different ways, whether it's 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, different segments of that. And then their, their power numbers, and which that, to me, that's football. And then we always talk about well, how does it transfer from the weight room to the to the field, and that's what I think our guys do as good as anybody in the country. And so, uh, and that's created a, you know, a different, uh, a lot of emphasis on single leg things to, to create the change of direction, you know, the explosive power in the in, in the game of football, finishing tackles, finishing blocks, and finishing runs, and and all those things. So that to me is what what I see. And so yeah, just a bigger stronger you know, we're, we're physically we're heavier and you know, we went through all positions and you know, o-line d-line was a really big emphasis for that we're, we're, we've got more mass to us than we had a year ago on both sides of the ball uh, and that's that's important so yeah it's uh and it's still process we're still we got a lot of young players you know you go through and you look at our two you know their junior and senior class they're not very big you know and so you have a big chunk of our guys are are in the the freshman sophomore whether it's redshirt sophomore sophomore redshirt freshman and freshman is the majority of our team, you know. So, but that's uh, that's just the way it uh, is, and that's the two classes we've recruited as a staff here since I've been the head coach. And so, but excited about the mixture of the upperclassmen and the and the younger guys in in the weight room. Kevin, yeah. uh, coach, how excited are you uh, for King for having this opportunity, and what did you see in his growth and his readiness to kind of take over the defensive coordinator? You know, um, it's kind of been a long time in the making. Yeah, we uh, uh, were together at Ole Miss and worked with his dad and, and really really developed a, a strong friendship and a, a trust with each other um, on and off the field, you know, and, and the way that uh, he lives his life and, and the kind of focus he has and the things that matter to him and the things important to him and, uh, and his family and, and uh, known his wife for, for many, many years. And, and so you know, the opportunity to get him here last year, I thought was really important that we spent time together before he started calling it. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, I have my own personality on things that we do defensively, which was different from the way, you know, we might have done it when we worked together, you know, at, uh, at the Ole Miss. And so um, you know, he went off and became a coordinator and at yeah, Eastern Illinois for he went, he literally left left us as a GA and went straight to be a, become a coordinator, which does not happen very often. And then he was the youngest Division One coordinator in the country at South Alabama. 
playing in the Sun Belt, which is the conference that I coached in at Arkansas State, you know, before we went to Ole Miss. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of really good players in that league and good coaches in that league, and it's, it's really good football. So uh, to be able to move to that position, and as we've talked about in the past, you know, his ability to change that culture there and, and ch- in both places, Eastern Illinois and and South Alabama defensively and, and create a standard on that side of the ball. And, and, and we just talked so much, you know, and like I said, that was, he was the person that I, you know, which bounce ideas off of, and it was back and forth both ways and things that we were doing things. So very, you know, we were kind of aligned, but still you, you haven't worked together with me calling it and him as an assistant. So last year I thought it was a great year to work together and to really kind of create for him to get a feel for, you know, how I wanted things done. And uh, there's some things that we do that he he really liked that we had changed and adjusted and had adapted over the last few years before I, you know, got here. And so, and then he brought some things that are a little bit unique and different that we hadn't been doing, you know. And so, and I, you know, gave him the, the authority to be able to, you know, make some of those adjustments. And I, and I intentionally, when we got into spring football, I did not sit in on any of the defensive staff meetings. Okay, as they were planning and organizing, and you know, I felt there was two reasons for that. Number one, I wanted to be with the offense and and be with Kalen and, and our offensive staff, and just to listen in and hear everything to help me, you know, get a good feel for, you know, his teaching style and coaching style and the things that we'd be doing on that side of the ball. And then, I wanted the defensive coaches to look to Kane, okay, and not look to me if there was a question because you're kind of always when you go through and you get ready for. You know, spring ball, you're always kind of hashing through things, and we're going to make this adjustment. That adjustment. And sometimes you got to work through it. And I didn't want them to look to me. They needed to look to him and let him answer the questions and let him solve the, you know, the technique discussions and all the things that happen behind closed doors. And, and sometimes you go through and, hey, I like doing it this way, and I like it this way, and this is why. And you, and you kind of sometimes you, you have good, healthy exchanges. and that's. But I didn't want to be a part of those because – and then what I would do is I would debrief with him, and he would keep me up to speed on what we were doing. And then once I felt like that he had kind of established himself as the new leader of the defense, then I'd come back in there and sit in. And then I've sat in quite a bit since that time. And so, but I just feel like that that was necessary in the process of helping him, you know, because it's always, when you come in brand new, it's one thing, but when you come in, and I've done it, you know, where you're, I've done both, where you're an assistant, you get elevated, or you become a guy that's coming in brand new. And I just think when you, when you're an assistant that gets elevated, there's a transition time for them to look to you in, in a new role of being the leader of the defense and even with the players and all the things that he did. So I just kind of let him take it and put his his stamp on it. And so um, that to me is why it just gets created confidence for a lot of different areas. And, and I trust him and I believe in him. And I think that uh, he's going to do a great job. Yeah, first of all, you know, I think that uh, – uh, and we've, we've done a big study on the word grit. You know, it's our one word for 2019, and the timing of it is probably perfect. You know, whereas a program and everything that we've been fighting to, to do. And, and uh, but one big component of grit is you have to overcome adversity. You, know, you have to learn to fight through tough times. And, and so we look for that. I mean, recruits, you know, say, how does that, what's that look like? And well, whether it's a home situation or an injury or whatever happens. And if you don't have those, it's hard to, you know, learn the same lessons in life. And we all have experienced it. The tough times cause us to really dig deep, reflect, decide what really matters to us. And we got to really push through. And you, when you tear your ACL, that the process of recovery from an ACL injury is a long, difficult process. And uh, I've often seen guys get broken by it, or they come back better than they ever were before. And so I just think that, the, the, you know, he's a fifth-year guy. He's been around here a long time. He's seen a lot of things. He's, he's been some highs, been some disappointments, been some frustrations. You know, you, you work your tail off all year long, and then the opening play of the first game of, of the season, you get hurt, you know, and then you're out for a whole year. You know, and I think those are, those are hard things, you know. But to, to see how he responded to that. You know, is that it's a powerful thing. It is, and that's how you know. And I believe that, that grit can be developed. You know, yeah, there's certain qualities that people have that are more inclined to be that way. But I think that's what he's experienced. You know, and the, the perseverance, and just the having the, just noticing him. You know, he, he, as a senior, and, and we have several seniors that are this that same way. Is that they've been here enough. They've been so close. They've been, they've been right there on that verge that they're like. 
I'm going to make sure it changes on my watch, that this is my last chance to be a part of this program, and I'm going to make sure that it's right. I'm not going to sit back. You know, and I made a really strong push this spring with our leadership guys, and I was definitely targeting Nick in this because he's an awesome individual, but he's a little quiet. You know, and we've had some really good players here recently that are great young men and they're good players, but they're they were too quiet. You know, we need and I and I made the statement that that leading by example is not leadership. It does not get the job done. Uh, I said, how would you guys feel if I never spoke and I tried to lead this football team? How would that work? Well, it wouldn't. It's obvious. Okay, you have to speak to lead. Okay, now because I told him, I said, leading by example is just doing your job. And when I made that statement, several of those guys were like, Coach, I never thought of it like that before. And I even used some examples of some previous players that, man, I love these guys. And they did all these great things, but they never talked. And they didn't want to confront. They didn't want to say anything to their teammates. And so, you know, when things weren't the way they needed to be. And then you have regrets about, you know, I get the end of the year and we're just we're right there again. And so I just feel like he's one of those guys and that uh, he's like, Coach, this is, that, that resonated with him, you know. And, and he, he kind of got it, you know. And so he's been – way more verbal and he's I don't think he you know he would probably rather not be I think he would rather just be a little more quiet do my thing and be great over here and and he works his tail off and he's and he's poised and positioned to have a great season and, and that's what we expect but but I think he's he's been challenged to bring guys with him you know and that's a big part not just take care of me but also lead not just by example okay that's great that's awesome but that's just doing your job if you're going to truly be a leader on this football team, you've got to step up. You've got to confront your teammates. You've got to encourage your teammates. You've got to be in such great shape that when we're busting our tail, I've got to be able to communicate when I am fatigued and tired, you know, which is what happens in a football game. And so that's easy to say until you're out there busting your tail and you can't even hardly breathe. How are you supposed to talk? You know? And so that's, that's about being in phenomenal shape. You know, when you get to that point, then you can communicate when you're fatigued because you're in great shape. So you're not just taking care of yourself. You're also encouraging, challenging, bring guys along with you and whatever they might need. They might need a butt chewing. They might need encouragement. They might need a hug. They might be kicking the tail. Whatever they need, we need seniors to, to own that. And that, to me, is kind of defines what he's become. And, and that's got to continue. I want to see it through fall camp. And I want him to be able to keep growing because I think he's the guy that, that has the physical talent to be a special, special player. He's long, he can run, and I want to see him just go attack that football, you know, and then attack the leadership piece in the locker room, on the field, after practice, before practice, all the little things you're going to do. So that, to me, is what I see from Nick, and that's how I've challenged him, and that's how we've talked behind the scenes, and he's responded. So that's where I just feel like that I've seen that more and more out of this group than I have anybody, you know, any groups we've had since, and I think there's a lot of reasons for it. But, uh, you know, I just think that uh, I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, the, the next – step for him as he as he takes on a leadership role. Coach Lodge, you you've been a head coach for a few years. Have you gotten to more of a comfort level in regards to like when to defer the coordinators and when to step mm -hmm. in with meetings or on the field and that is that role more comfortable for you now? It is, there's no question. And and I think once again it kinda of goes back to you know what I said earlier, you know, when you when you come in new, it's, it feels a certain way. When you're promoted within the staff, it feels a little different. And so I, I think it takes it's taken time, especially as I you know transitioned even this past off season from being the coordinator to being you know just the head coach and not calling the defense. And so that also has created a more of a comfort level to be able to to move in and out of areas and be able to um, you know just truly be in that role and not try to you know, be over here doing this with the defense. And so I just think that, you know, this is, you know, year three going into being the head coach, year four being here, knowing the program and the people here. And so uh, definitely a comfort level. You know, you can go into Big Ten Media Day, felt different this year, uh, uh, felt better. You know, I've, I've, you know I, was, I was so nervous the first year. You know, I don't think I really had a chance to really enjoy it, you know. And so, but then year two was better, and then this past year was the best one. And yeah, I felt the most comfortable, and I just think yeah, just that's what time does, you know. And so, but I want to do a great job of leading this football team and being able to, exert and I just pray for wisdom to know when to, to say what you know when do you step into a meeting when do you have the wisdom to not you know when you allow a coordinator to you know handle a situation or when should you step in and insert yourself whether it's with a player with a coach or whatever so that's just experience and time and I want to be doing a great job of that and and, and be a great leader mm-hmm 
Well, first of all, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of confidence that he brings with him. You know, it's kind of a quiet confidence, you know, uh, that I kind of have observed. Um, he understands exactly what he wants, you know, and I, there's, a, there's a phrase that I was given years ago by a coach I highly respect and worked with, and that it says, conviction-driven leadership is based off a vision of perfection. When you know what it's supposed to look like, you lead with confidence. And, and I feel like that's how I approach defensively. And that's the way that I wanted to lead defensively. And, and when things weren't right, you got the confidence. Just like I talked about the player with Nick, you got the courage and confidence to step up and verbally say something. It's no different as a coach. And so that's how I've, I've sat in all the meetings. I watch in practice. There's just a tremendous confidence. And he understands all the positions. And I believe he could coach them all. He could coach the O-line. He could coach receivers. He could coach running backs. He could coach quarterbacks, which he does. You know, tight ends. And, and there's a, that's what you need. Not every coordinator leads that way. Sometimes it's a little more of a, you know, everybody kind of does their thing. He doesn't tell them, you know, he doesn't, you know, I don't think he's micromanages in any, any way. But I'm just saying he has that confidence to know this is exactly what I'm looking for. And we sit through and you talk at his coaches and there's different techniques and different ways of doing things. But, and I've seen him do a great job of meshing the things that we've done here. We've done some good things on offense in the past. We just got to get better, you know. And so to be able to address those areas that you need to focus on, and I, and I did, I specifically said, hey, come in here and put in your offense. I just wanted him to be able to, to teach everybody, you know, and that's, you know, he came in here as I did and did not have any assistance. You know, I, I told our, you know, sometimes when you hire coaches and you hire coordinators, they like bringing in their guys, you know, and I'm just like, you know what, well, these are, these are my guys. These are our guys, you know, so these are the coaches that, that coach here and I, and I believe in them and, and I'm not, uh, I'm not replacing any of them because I believe in them. And so I just appreciate he came in here and he already knew a couple of them, but not that well. Um, so a couple, one more than others, but, uh, some guys he didn't know at all, but to come in here and, and that, that takes, a, it takes some humility. It also takes confidence to be able to, to do that. And I think that's what I see from him. And I think it exudes to our players. And uh, just a creative mind, a guy that, that knows he kind of can see what he wants to, to build and the whole big, you know, that's just got the big picture view of it, but also has the confidence to, to teach the techniques and say, hey, is this the best way to do it? And then be able to have those conversations with coaches. And at the end of the day, get it the way you want it. And that's why I always tell, hey, you get what you want. When you tell me what you need, and I'm going to support you in that way. And so I, I like that about him, you know, and I think that he I just want him to be himself, you know, and, and uh, he's a very, you know, cerebral guy and has a really good good mind. He's very smart, and that's what you have to have. You guys, you got to manage a lot of things, you know. And so I just think that uh, – but the thing that just kind of sticks out to me is just that, that quiet confidence of this is, this is what I want. This this is what I see. This is how it's supposed to look, and we're not going to, you know, settle for anything less. And so it's a very, it's been a very comprehensive and very, you know, involved um, off season. You know, we've done more in our player practices, more install, more things we've done on that side of the ball um, since I've been here. And I think it's, I think it was, we'll, you know, reap the benefits of that here in fall camp. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day, Elio.